We are going to jump into um, a wonderful passage that is, uh, is, is a resurrection passage. So this is a passage you often read on Easter, resurrection narrative. And I'm not going to read the whole passage. You can look at that, and I'd encourage you to do that. But I'm just going to read the four, first verse to see who's there. Matthew 28, 1. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Uh, the accounts of the resurrection are shocking in so many different ways in the Gospels. They are um, just remarkable and, and surprising. And so um, let's just take a look at some of the surprising things about this resurrection narrative. Jesus had, on at least three occasions that we have in the Gospels, talked to his disciples about the fact he was going to die and then he was going to be raised. And, you know, we look back and we're like, why didn't they get it? Why weren't they expecting the resurrection? Because in the narratives, they're not. No one's expecting the resurrection. You may remember, and this is how honest the Bible is, how honest these narratives are, that in all the four Gospels, the three synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and the Gospel of John, there are accounts, there, there's, there, the resurrection happens. And in those Gospels, when we look at the descriptions of it, they preserve the fact that it's women that are there. And then they, and we look back at the cross, this crisis moment where, you know, this greatly loved figure who had called men and women into ministry and had empowered them and had blessed them and had shared the, the truth of the kingdom with them, you know, the secrets of heaven and had uh, shared his ministry with them, sent them out on missionary journeys and so on. And incidentally, the 12 were not the only ones sent. There was also a group of 70. So he had done all these amazing things. They were part of this. Their lives were centered on it. But a signal failure of the disciples, it's just there in the Gospels, is that they let him down. John, the one that Jesus loved, is the, seems to be the only male disciple who's present who can face the reality of Jesus' death on the cross. You know, this was a hideous form of death. It was a public humiliation to be naked, to be have been tortured and tormented and condemned as a criminal and then crucified. I mean, the other disciples, men could not face it. There are women there. And in the Gospels, the women not only have the courage to go to support Jesus in that moment, there are different accounts of who's there. And it's very interesting that because one of the things that authenticated perspectives in the ancient world was eyewitness testimony, just like it is today. And the different gospel writers want to name people who are there because they are inviting, if they knew those people, they're inviting people to, to come and question them. And so the ones they personally knew, each of the gospel writers knew different folks who were there, they mentioned those names so that that. that that at this, that they could be questions about the reality of the resurrection, um, and it could be authenticated by these witnesses. Now, imagine it was made up for a moment. These were Jewish men. They felt terrible about Jesus' death. They didn't want Jesus to go down in history as a criminal, so they um, they wanted the movement to continue. So they pretended that Jesus was resurrected. Like, let's examine that for a moment. So wait a minute. These same leaders who are going to have to have to have to launch this movement into history are going to portray themselves as faithless deserters who lock themselves in a room uh, and they're going to make the heroes of the story women who go to the cross and then go to the tomb. Women didn't go expecting the resurrection either. They were there to anoint the body, but they're nevertheless the ones who are showing up and the men look terrible. Like the leader, they're going to do that? Matthew's going to have two witnesses, these ones that he knew, uh, these inviting us to question. Well, in a court, you needed three witnesses to validate an event, and women couldn't testify at all. So these Jewish men are going to choose women. They're making up the story to validate their own story. That's clearly the crucial moment in the whole Christian movement. That doesn't make any sense. It's a completely ridiculous idea that, that this could be made up. No, instead, they're faithful even when it's awkward and difficult for them to be faithful to the truth of what actually happened. And so here are these women who are presented, indeed, were more courageous and more full of faith than, than the 12 famous disciples. Um, 
It's an incredible thing. It can't be accidental that at the most crucial moment in the life, ministry, the death and resurrection of Jesus, the most crucial time, that's most crucial for us as members of the movement, that it's women who are there as witnesses. That should open our eyes to the powerful way in which women can be involved who have leadership gifts and capacities uh, in the life of our community. So let's pray. Lord, we want to honor the women of our life who has whose faith has inspired us and, and, and helped to build up our own. We thank you for their witness, whether they're in the scriptures as primary witnesses to the resurrection or whether they are uh, folks who, who blessed us and taught us and encouraged us and been examples for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.